Hi everyone, welcome. Today is the first day of the great backyard bird count. It's this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and um, the idea is that you go out and count as many birds as you can. So my friend Chris and I have come out to Rifle Bird Sanctuary in Delta, British Columbia, and we're going to see how many birds we can count and uh, try to get as many pictures as we can. If I stay up all night tonight uh, editing photos and editing video, I will uh, hopefully get this video out to you really quickly. Otherwise, you know, it might be a week or two. Anyways, hopefully we'll uh, see lots of birds and uh, let you enjoy some, some beautiful views. Well, it hasn't been one or two weeks, but more like two to three months since we went to the bird sanctuary. Still, it's fun to share this with you. Bird photography is probably one of the most accessible kinds of wildlife photography. You know, we don't all have bears and fox and lions in our backyard. Um, so it's a great way to learn about wildlife photography. Um, I have a Peterson's Field Guide but it can be overwhelming. I highly recommend you get a field guide, um, but you know, there's 10,000 different species in the world of different birds. And so when you look at those guidebooks, it's very overwhelming. To make it manageable, I went to a local city um, and they have a pamphlet that they developed together with the field naturalists in the area. And it shows basically 55 different birds that are common in our area. Now, that's a number that I can handle. I can handle 55 birds, and a lot of them I already know. So my current goal, my personal checklist that I'm developing is from that list. I want to store photos of those 55 birds as a start um, on my birding journey. Um, I'm gonna keep working away at the list and treat it kind of like a scavenger hunt. Cornell Labs is actually the one putting on the Great Backyard Bird Count and they have a couple of really handy tools that you can put on your phone. Um, Merlin Bird is one, um, eBird is another. They're great for identifying and keeping track of the birds that you've seen. Um, I also use iNaturalist. So as you're watching these bird images, pay attention to what you like. Have a look at the depth of field, you know, how much do you like to see in focus or out of focus? Um, pay attention to the backgrounds, you know, which backgrounds do you like, which ones do you not like, which ones are better, which ones are not as nice. Um, and have a look at the feeling of balance. Do these images feel balanced to you? I think the northern pintail was my favorite bird of the day. I know I've seen them before, but I don't think I ever really appreciated their real elegance that they have. I love that deep chocolate brown of their head and that wonderful swoosh of that white that goes up their neck and uh, curves around the back of their head. It's beautiful. In this shot, there was something going on between the rocks and the bird, but I wasn't quite sure what, so I tried cropping it and I think it made a lovely, uh, simple portrait as well. Get out with your camera to your neighborhood and your local parks. Um, the Rifle Bird Sanctuary has lots of birds at all times of the year. It's a wonderful area of marshes and wetlands and it's perfect for the birds that are resting and eating as they're doing their migration. Um, the sanctuary has been there for 60 years and they actually have a list of their own 60 regular birds that always seem to be able to find there. So that's another way for me to track my list. Um, birds are the most active, of course, in the morning when they're feeding 
and um, that's a great time to get out. But of course we were there from morning until the afternoon and there were still lots of birds for us to watch. The most important thing is to respect the needs of the birds. Don't stress them out. Be careful of the nesting and the feeding areas. Now this shot, this was when I learned that my cell phone can actually do subject tracking when it's in cinematic mode. You just double tap on this, the uh, subject and it tracks it. Watch as it runs across the screen. Um, it didn't do a very good job with the beak or with the legs, but uh, I'm excited to try this. When you're trying to identify different birds, there's a few different things to look out for. Um, the first thing is the shape and the size of the bird. You can tell a lot of differences between birds just by looking at the shape and the size. Another thing is the movement and the behaviors of the bird, what they're doing, how they're moving, how they're interacting. Uh, third thing is the location. Is this a bird that should be in this location at this time when you're seeing it? Another is the color and the markings. Sometimes the coloring is not as reliable because of course the colors change during the year depending on the season. So you have to be a bit more careful with that but of course it's a, a big clue. Uh, and then there's also of course the LBB, the not the little black dress but the little brown bird. So many little brown birds, hard to tell apart. Uh, the last one is their songs. Um, hard to learn, but I suspect you already know the sound of a red-winged blackbird after watching this far in the video. Of course, with the Canada Goose, everyone knows to get out of the way when these guys are coming down the trail. In terms of gear, the best camera is the one that you have. Don't stress out about it. Um, a long lens really helps. I have a 200 to 500 millimeter lens. Um, 300 millimeters is good. Um, but if you don't have that kind of a telephoto, you know, birds in the landscape that show their environment, those are also wonderful. And there are also a lot of approachable birds that you can get up close to. In terms of photography rules, just remember that they're guidelines and they're there to help you. They're not hard rules. In terms of composition, think about the rule of thirds when you're doing your composition. Also think about complementary and clean backgrounds. That'll help with your bird photography. In terms of light, if you can get out during the golden hour, that's ideal. Not blowing out your highlights is very important with birds. Some of them have these small spots that if you overexpose them, you're not going to get that detail in the feathers back. So um, be sure not to blow out your highlights. Another really important thing with birds is getting down to eye level. Um, your images will look much better um, if you're looking straight across at the birds. Um, try to focus on the eye. That's the first thing we look at. So focus on the eye. And if you can get a catch light in their eye, that will really improve the image as well. When you're thinking about the camera settings uh, for your exposure triangle, think about how having a more open aperture is going to give you a lovely depth of field and beautiful bokeh in the background. Um, in terms of shutter speed, you're going to have camera shake, you're going to have bird shake, so fast is good. Um, 1 500th of a second for a sitting bird is good, um, 1 1000th, make it fast. 
Um, in terms of the ISO, I often set my camera to have um, auto ISO on, um, but I do set a maximum so that it doesn't go way, way high and introduce too much noise into my photos. Another thing is to have your camera set on continuous shooting mode so that when you uh, press the button, shutter button, um, you have quick bursts and you are sure to catch just the right moment. You might have a lot of photos, but you can always delete them and you'll be sure to get the good shot of just the perfect moment. So I've shown you 17 out of 70 species of birds that were at the sanctuary that week. I would encourage you all to get out and find a list of your own local birds and start your own scavenger hunt. Soon you'll be out looking everywhere for fast moving birds in flight, birds feeding, birds fighting. It'll be a whole lot of fun. After a full day at a, a wonderful sanctuary, even the white puffy clouds started to look like birds. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. Cheers!